Fire Protection District Pension Board of Trustees regular meeting Thursday, April 10th, 2014 at 18.02 hours. Trustee Aronson, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Let the record show that all directors and or all trustees are present. Uh, first item, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Good. There we good. Okay, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, review the January 9th, 2014 pension meeting minutes. I'm good, Mike. Okay, I'm good. The minutes be approved as submitted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, any old business? Okay, our first uh, item on our new business is the 2013 allocation report. That's just for review, Mary. Just for your records. They did revise it, so the revised one is on the top. The original one is underneath. The original. Oh, I. See. So the 183,000 in net benefits, that's how much has been paid out for benefits during the year. Is that right? Oh, no, yeah. Because 183,860 for net benefits. That the amount that's been paid out. I assume that's correct, yes. Because for the year? Yes. Because this is for the 12 the whole Even though year it's of under the period total, it's still the. So, and the 12,576 is what was paid to us. Or 2012 under, under the warrant. What's the fees and expenses? Twenty-two thousand seven fifteen. At the bottom, the fees and expenses. That's their fees. Oh, okay. So that's you pay them for managing the. They retain. That. They retain it. It's about one percent. We know if that 183,000 figure, is that going up or down, or do we know over the years? Do you have any recollection? I don't, but I could certainly pull out the previous reports and check. It would be interesting to see sure. it would be. Okay. Any other questions on the allocation report? Seeing none, uh, the next will be, uh, I need a motion to execute the warrant. Right. Just to, a motion to approve the approve. submitting the warrant. Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion to submit the, 20, the 2013 warrant. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there any other business to be brought before the pension board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 At 1807. Okay, give us just a couple minutes, Doc, and then we'll start the regular meeting. 
Okay, we'll call to order the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, April 10th, 2014 at 18.08. Director Swartz, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let the record show all the directors are present. Director Wisniewski joining us by speakerphone. Are there any additions or deletions to the current agenda? Good. Good. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Agenda's approved. Uh, review the March 13th. 2014 regular meeting minutes. Mike, I think I remember being there. Uh, <laughs> let's see. No. Isn't that? Uh, you, uh, you were absent and excused. Yeah. That's the one where you were flying and you couldn't join us on the phone, is that correct? Do you recall that? Yes. Thank you. or corrections? Move the uh, minutes be approved as submitted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, you're abstaining since you weren't here? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, that, okay, that motion carries. Uh, that'll take us to financial matters. Uh, uh, Alec. First thing you've got is the 2013 year end unaudited financials first group of charts uh, in your packet. I think we've made all the corrections that we're going to make before it goes to the auditor. So it's going or it's gone to the auditor, right? So these are the unaudited, these are the unaudited results uh, and uh, with a couple of uh, corrections that we made. I think that uh, they're probably as good as we can get at this point. We'll see what the auditor thinks when, uh, when they take a look at it. Uh, the second thing, are there any questions on the uh, uh, year end statement. Okay. Uh, March financials. Uh, we have uh, total expenses of $228,649. And uh, I move that uh, those expenses be approved. Is there a second? Second. All those, Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Aye. Motion carries. That's it. That's it. Um, legal update. Do you have anything, Chief? From? Uh, no, nothing uh, other than the intergovernmental agreement. We'll get to a little bit later here. Okay. Do we need to prove the March expenses? What? Is that? Yes, we just, did. we just did that. Yeah. Yeah. We just did that. Mm -hmm. Uh, fire Chief's report. Okay, uh, pretty, uh, this is going to be a pretty quick meeting too. Um, the, Can you move the speaker a little closer? Yeah. Chief, please. I'll do that. Uh, okay, um, March uh, we had 97 calls, which was uh, up quite a bit from uh, February, uh, largely because uh, we responded to a total of 29 uh, motor vehicle accidents uh, during the month. Um, uh, about 20 of those occurred on uh, two different days where it snowed heavily and we were not ran anywhere from, I think, uh, seven one day and 13 another day of uh, uh, car wrecks. Um, other than that, it was a relatively quiet period. We had uh, one chimney fire with no loss, no other fires, and uh, just the usual, uh, usual business. Um, we, on training, we've got uh, 
The EMT class is about halfway through. Uh, we've got quite a few folks still in that. And our driver operator training, uh, we've got a number of our folks that are working through that program uh, in, with the intention of going on to certification as driver operators. Um, prior to this class, of course, we only had a total of uh, three personnel that had been certified as driver operators in the past, and all three of us had uh, brought that certification from other locations. So this is a first uh, for the district. And of course, again, both of those classes are uh, funded, 90% uh, funded by uh, FEMA. So it's a... Is that certification for driver operators, is that a state certification or a FEMA? It's a state and actually it's a national certification. Okay. It's on, under what's called the uh, International Fire Service Accreditation uh, Congress. So that certification will carry over to any other state as well. Um, let's see, in terms of, of uh, the issues that we've got going on right now, uh, we have done the pre-build for the tenders, uh, and uh, they have uh, basically, the, that's kind of the final design phase of it, you know, where the switches are going to go and how to deal with any things that we may not have thought of in the specifications. Uh, so they'll get back to us uh, hopefully next month. We should have a delivery date on that, but we're still anticipating that will be sometime in the fall, that those will be available. Um, the apparatus committee, uh, also uh, the members that went down to uh, do the pre-build conference, uh, was a really valuable time to look at uh, designs for uh, the rescue engines. They you know, had roughly 150 engines under some, you know, some stage of construction there, so we got to see a lot of what can be done with those, and uh, you know, that'll We'll roll that over into, you know, our specifications for the uh, the rescue pumper, which are probably going to take a couple of months for us to get prepared and then out to bid. Um, the the other thing that we've got as far as apparatus is that uh, we'd like to go ahead and order the uh, the Dodge chassis, which is a 3,500 uh, cap chassis uh, for uh, the squad, which will have a, a utility body installed on the back of it. And again, that's going to be taking the place of our utility pickup and, um, you know, the, one of the uh, SUVs that we've got here now. And we would uh, actually, in addition, be able to move our road rescue gear onto that because, you know, right now we carry all that on the, on the heavy rescue, which is certainly not ideal for driving, you know, way up into the back of Staunton Park. Uh, so, you know, having the space on the smaller vehicle uh, and the seating for um, you know for four or five firefighters make that a, a much more efficient vehicle than uh, what we're currently doing with a small SUV and the and the big um, uh, rescue truck. What is the timing on that? You think? Uh, they said 30 to 45 days for the chassis, and mm -hmm. it'll probably take us that long to get uh, a utility body ordered and shipped as well. And what we're going to do is probably have the chassis just go to the. You know, there's a number of uh, companies down in the Denver area that they'll have the chassis shipped in or the utility box shipped into them. We just deliver the chassis and they mount it there. So we'll so, design the utility box. What's that? We design it. Yeah, the you know the utility box companies will pretty much do whatever you want with those. Um, although what we're really looking at is just very standard. You know, just boxes essentially. Uh, we don't have anything unusual we want to do with that. Uh, it's going to have room for. You know, air packs, some basic hand tools, the rope rescue gear, you know, a medical kit, and then the rest of it will be open, uh, you know, in case we need to bring hose back from fires or, you know, any other equipment we need to transport. So it's going to be, you know, basically just a utility uh, type of truck. A little better than the, you know, the Jeep Cherokee was, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the last thing, um, we, uh, uh, decided to go ahead and open the deputy chief position uh, in-house first to see if we had uh, any qualified applicants in-house in that were interested. Um, and uh, that will be open until next Wednesday. And then uh, we'll take a look at what we get for uh, applicants at that point. And hopefully if we've got some applicants that uh, you know, meet the qualifications, we'll move ahead with interviews on that. Um, and if not, then we would, of course, go ahead and advertise outside. Uh, I'm hopeful that uh, we'll find an in-house head candidate, that it saves us both time and the expense of, uh, you know, advertising and uh, shopping around for an outside candidate. 
And that's pretty much it on what we've got going on right now. Of course, uh, largely uh, just getting ready for wildfire season as well. Any questions for the chief? Okay, our first uh, old business item is to review the draft ambulance billing and collections procedures. Okay, uh, the only change that uh, we made from the last time uh, is uh, we clarified the language under write-offs a little bit to be a little more uh, succinct. So it basically just says that any time after 90 days after we bill, you know, we could, uh, you know, write it off as bad debt if, uh, you know, we have indication that it's, uh, you know, for any reason not going to be paid. Um, other than that, it's the same as uh, the last draft that we looked at last month. I have a question to reach number two. Okay. There's no money in there, so are the these are the these are what we're going to bill for. But is that really rates or is that? Yeah, I, I didn't include the rates. I know the rates were established by the board in the past, uh, and um, you know if we want to look at adjusting those rates, we can. Uh, I'm not, I I did, you know I don't I don't care. I'm just saying it says rates, but the the, the list is just of sort of billable items. Yeah. Right, and I think I just never got around to putting those in. I was, okay. uh, so we can go ahead and get that that uh, included, and then we can email you back that with the uh, the uh, rate amounts in there. When was the last time the rates were changed? Do you know? Um, when were they updated? Not since I've been here. 2009, maybe? I was going to say 9 or 10. Yeah. 9 or 10. Oh, we did it. Happened months. before now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just don't remember. Yeah, what. yeah, and I do know that I, you know, I did, uh, you know, because like um, Medicare does allow for two different levels of ALS billing, uh, as well as a BLS bill, and we have not uh, done that in the past. It's been a flat billing amount. Um, that's something that uh, could be considered. So at that, you know, we could either include the existing rates, basically being the same for any of those, or uh, look at adjusting those rates based on uh, the the three levels of, of calls that are recognized by Medicare. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I, I agree. So when you do your rates, I would suggest that we do them the way you have them listed here. Yeah. Okay. And even, even if we have to establish a new rate for level two, is that what you're proposing? Is that right, right, right. Well, right now, you, it's the same rate for all three. Um, oh. Except for transport. Right. Well, you know, except for the LZ. The LZ transport is is a separate rate right now, but we don't we don't bill a different amount for BLS or ALS calls, mm. um, but that is allowable. And part of, you know there's two reasons for that. In one case, uh, you know many agencies don't send ALS on every call, uh, and then also when you do provide ALS, you use a lot more supplies. Uh, you know you're you're providing medications and you know, IV fluids and a lot of other things that cost us money. Whereas some of the basic, you know, if someone has a nosebleed, pretty much, you know, we're going to give them a couple of four by fours and, you know, hold their nose while they get down to the hospital. If, on the other hand, it's a, you know, a, a major call, you know, we can burn through quite a bit of supplies, uh, you know, in, in providing that service. That, so those two reasons are, are why there's options for billing at a higher rate there. So that would be not only Medicare, but everybody would be billed at a higher rate. Right, that's correct. Yeah. Well, I think it's you know if that's if our costs if that's what our how our costs reflect, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we can certainly uh, we can certainly put that together. We'll look at uh, you know what the uh, well obviously what the reimbursable rates are, as well as um, you know what other agencies are are charging for those types of calls. to new business. Uh, first item is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a pickup chassis. That will be resolution 2014-4-1. It's in your packet. Any questions on that? Assuming everybody's 
read it, I'm going to move to approve it. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that motion carries. Do I need to read that into the record? Just by the resolution. Just by the number, number. of okay. uh, Motion carried to for resolution 2014 4-1. Uh, the next item is a motion to approve intergovernmental agreement for dispatching services. Okay, uh, this uh, agreement is the agreement that uh, basically uh, would allow us to have uh, Evergreen uh, dispatch us and to establish a uh, method whereby they determine uh, the cost for each agency. And as uh, was mentioned before, the, uh, the first year the cost will be picked up by the 911 Authority Board, and then that drops off by 25% per year over the next four years. Uh, the uh, agreement was um, was drafted uh, jointly by all of the agencies that are going to be working with uh, Evergreen Fire, so that's Foothills Fire, Inner Canyon, Indian Hills, North Fork, uh, and Golden Gate. And uh, unfortunately, uh, um, uh, Tucson, Niemer, and Cody represents all of the agencies that we're negotiating with Evergreen. Uh, so uh, the the agreement was drafted uh, essentially by uh, Richard Tucson, who's our legal counsel as well. And uh, it's been poured over pretty extensively by all the departments uh, involved. Um, it does, it's a five-year agreement uh, that, uh, you know, we can terminate at any time with 90 days notice. Uh, however, if Evergreen um, Fire decides they don't want to uh, do it anymore, they have a much longer period. They have to give us at least six months in order to be able to locate other dispatching um, uh, services. Um, and pretty much the only other real uh, substantial part of it is the uh, cost method for calculating that. And essentially what that is is they, that everybody's calls get lumped in together, uh, then we count up how many calls there are, divide the total cost of the service, and everybody pays the, the proportionate share. Uh, so um, for us, that, uh, that represents about 25% of the calls. So um, the you know, estimated cost for us is going to be um, you know, approximately $40,000 at the current rate. Uh, once the county is no longer picking up the, the tab for that. So you're, it's, it's going to cost about 160000 to run the whole shop? Right, roughly, yeah. What about uh, District, uh, District 5 Fair Play? What, what, is there some way of getting them involved? What, uh, what's going to happen when we move over to Evergreen? Um, you know, Fair Play will go back to transferring the calls. Um, you know, the main reason that they began dispatching our calls in the past was because, uh, you know, every time they tried to transfer calls to Jeffco, uh, there were a couple of times, you may recall, where uh, Jeffco tried to not take the call and send it back, and, yeah. uh, you know, they, they were just uh, some real logistical problems with it. It was taking, on average, about uh, seven to ten minutes to transfer a call. Um, with uh, Evergreen taking over, we anticipate you know, that they're going to be able to, uh, you know, deal with uh, accepting calls from, uh, from Fair Play much more quickly. Um, you know, and one of the main reasons that we're, we're moving that, you know, the Park County dispatching over uh, to Evergreen as well is that as we go ahead with, uh, you know, moving on to the, uh, the Metro CAD system, uh, you know, we'll, you know, Fair Play has no way of uh, basically uh, utilizing that system and uh, they would not be able to uh, dispatch in the same manner that uh, that Evergreen is going to be dispatching us so and they, they don't have any way even currently of being able to, to track resources or um, you know they're remembering that Park County the total of Park County is about 11,000 people which is smaller than you know the residents of our district so obviously they, they don't have the need for Quite as sophisticated a CAD system as uh, as will be utilized in Jefferson County in the future. Okay, and this begins when uh, the um, uh, the agreement uh, started as of April first. It's just been going around for approval by agencies uh, based on their board dates. Um, 
Foothills Fire uh, moved over to Evergreen Dispatch on the 7th, uh, and uh, we're going to be rolling different agencies over as, uh, as everything is uh, kind of pulled together. Um, right now, I think we're going to probably be the last one, but we anticipate uh, that it will sometime in late in April or early May is when we'll be uh, rolling over onto, onto their dispatch. So the Evergreen Dispatch will still go to our repeater? Yes. In other words, in other words the, the repeater system stays the same? Yes. Actually, it's going to take a piece out of it because from Jeffco, they can't uh, hit our repeater. So what they've had to do is uh, the calls go over a, a phone line to Smoky Hill, which is clear out by Centennial or Aurora. And then it's shot from there up to our, our uh, uh, in tower. Um, you know, the Bergen Park, actually, they can just stick an antenna on the roof of their building and hit, the, hit our repeater very easily. So uh, we're reducing one more uh, point of failure in the, in the system by doing this as well. Any questions? We need a motion. Right, we need a motion to approve the uh, agreement. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion. Aye. Motion carries. Any other new business tonight? See none. Uh, any citizens' issues tonight? See none. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Or second? Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 At 1830.